It is not enough to simply acknowledge wrongdoing. True repentance goes beyond saying, I'm sorry. Repentance is turning away from transgression, with the intent of never repeating the offensive behavior again. No one can fully repent unless they realize and accept they have caused harm. It is often difficult for people to admit to causing damage. It seems that it is easier to be dismissive of the feelings of others, than to accept responsibility and compensate their loss. Sincere remorse is characterized by the desire to make reparations for injustice. How do we find the integrity and determination to do what is right, even when it is uncomfortable? What changes are you willing to make in your life to satisfy God? Today we're going to be talking about Ezra. Ezra was the prophet or he was the faith and action preacher. James admonishes us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And today we're going to be talking about just that. What will you do or what should we do when we hear a word from the Lord that's instructional or that's correcting us in the things that we're doing in our lives? We would like to thank our sister, Sarah Dennis. She sent us a wonderfully encouraging message, and she asked us to answer some of the questions at the end of the paragraphs in our lesson. So we're going to be doing that, but we're going to be doing that in a separate video, and that's going to be airing on Wednesdays. So if this is your first time joining us or if you joined us before, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you share this with someone. And if you um, haven't done so yet, subscribe and hit that bell so that you're notified each time we post a new video. Also, we don't ask for any monetary support. If you would like to do that, we'll make that the information available for you. Just let us know. We do believe that there is a blessing in giving. But if you are blessed by anything that you hear, we ask that you share this video with someone else who might be blessed the same way that you have been. And welcome back to this week's Sunday School Discussion. Remember, we are studying from the book Precepts for Living, and there are daily Bible readings that you can follow throughout the week. Our aim for change this week is by the end of this lesson, we will contrast the people's need for repentance with a joyful response to God's word. And we will uh, believe that God's truth is eternal, and we will grow in determination to serve God in our community and beyond. The Bible background is Ezra chapter 9 to 10, and the printed text is Ezra chapter 10. Devotional reading is Ezekiel chapter 18. Although Ezra was the preacher that was sent by God to tell Israel about their great sin, it was up to the people to repent and turn from their ways in order to be obedient to God's word. Today's lesson, we will find out what they needed to do in order to please God. I guess it's really a question of what it is that you're willing to do to please God or to satisfy God. In the lesson, we see that the children of Israel, they're out, um, they've just gotten out of captivity and they've sinned against God they had an agreement with God and God told them back in Deuteronomy to not marry other wives or to marry outside of their people, but they had. And now they're in this position where Ezra confronts them and brings to them to the forefront their sin. A term came to my mind, the faithful few. It was very comforting for me to see that the remnant that heard what the Lord was saying, because even though it was Ezra who was saying it, it was a word from the Lord. And they immediately recognized that that was the word from the Lord. And they went into repentance and they confessed their sin. They uh, corrected. They actually went into a plan of trying to correct the sin that they have committed. And I like the fact that they did, they owned their uh, transgressions. They didn't, um, you know, a lot of times when you are, are, are confronted with your sin, the easiest thing for a person to do is to be defensive and 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 go into justifying why they did this and the 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 uh, situation that was at hand but they realized what God was saying they feared God they had reverential fear for God they loved God and they wanted to do right by God so they were willing to sacrifice 
their family, really, and, you know, letting go of the wives and the children that they had with these wives that they were not supposed to have, and they were willing to correct the the wrong that they have done, and I thought that was just wonderful. Even in that, I think that was a difficult decision to make, even though they knew it was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and also, you know, even they're coming out of... Um, uh, exile mm -hmm. in being brought back into the land that was a good thing and they knew that God was the deliverer mm -hmm. and they knew that God had kept his part of the of the bargain if they knew the word mm -hmm. they could do the word mm -hmm. and they some of them didn't know but most of them did mm -hmm. and for them to come back into the land and be grateful toward God for bringing them back was one thing but to show that they were willing to make that hard decision mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. give up their families, mm -hmm. their children, mm -hmm. that was difficult. Yes. And so they really had to show a faith in God. Mm -hmm. Just as Ezra, who was known as the faith and action preacher, mm -hmm. he had to show the faith in God that the people were going to listen to him mm -hmm. and that they were going to repent, they were going to change, they were going to give up the things that are, were contrary to God's word. Right. That's a difficult mm -hmm. decision that they had to make, yes. I think. Yes. It well, would be for me. Yeah. But how, do, <laughs> yes. how, do you, how do you even get there to the, yeah. in the first place? You get to a point where you're in this place of transgression mm -hmm. because you've made an agreement with God. And you said, we won't do this. And now you've done this. They've just gotten out of um, captivity. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, I guess when you're in captivity, you're praying to get out of captivity. Right. You're making all types of bargains right. and all types of, you know, <laughs> right. Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never, I'll never do yeah. right, right? Make all those bargains. <laughs> <many times>? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So, but now you're here and then you find yourself there again in this position. How do you even get there in the first place? I would say human nature. Mm. Human nature. I mean... We're, we're creatures, we forget very easily. I mean, God just rescued them, like you said, they, out of bondage, out of captivity. Mm -hmm. And the second they were out, it was, hey, you know, free time <laughs> to do what we want to do. And that's unfortunately how we are as humans. Mm -hmm. We've, we forget how God has brought us out of tough situations. We forget how we were laying prostrate before God, you know, pleading and, and praising and worshiping. And the minute that the hardship, it seems like that hardship is no longer, then we just go into doing what we want to do anyway. It's party time. Uh, part, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We become, we, well, we become lax. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of our sins are willful. We mm -hmm. just want to do what well, we, we want to do. It's that flesh. That flesh rises mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and tells us, you know what? Uh, in, z in this case, where they had married other women, mm -hmm. uh, she looks good. The lust of the eye. And uh, <laughs> like, uh, I can have another. Matter of fact, I'm so blessed. I can have another wife because that was mm -hmm. one of the things of prosperity. You, mm -hmm. know, you can get all the wives that you wanted, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But they had made up their minds, each of individual person mm -hmm. and actually you know it's good to said the men had taken wives not the wives had <laughs> taken the men so the, the sin was on the men <laughs> mm -hmm. but <laughs> well Jesus well it's, and from the beginning it, from the very beginning it's been about the men and their sins mm -hmm. you know but uh, God is so good. This yes. turned into a different lesson. Now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Go ahead. the grace of God. You got to, you know, you got to tell it like it is. No, I'm just, I'm just really kidding on that. But um, the the sins of the fathers, mm -hmm. that they pointed out in the lesson in in, in the background lessons, the sins of the fathers were no longer on the children. It was an individual thing now, mm -hmm. and each of these people had to repent for themselves for mm -hmm. what they knew was wrong and did anyway because they willfully sinned mm -hmm. and took on wives mm -hmm. to themselves. And the other point that I wanted to make that I didn't know this, they were, some of them were married to uh, uh, Hebrew or yeah, Hebrew Israel, women, Hebrew mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. but they divorced them to marry the pagan or took on another woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know that wasn't that wasn't love. It was called something else <laughs> uh, that we think is love. Right. And they had children uh, with them as well. As we were studying this, uh, a scripture came to mind, um, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I thought that was um, a good scripture uh, when you look at this uh, lesson, because 
what jumped out at me is the word promise. A lot of times we mm-hmm. think of a promise and we we add a, a favorable connotation to the word promise, like mm-hmm. it's good stuff. We forget about God's judgment. Mm-hmm. That's and a that's a promise. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> you know, we forget promise. we forget about God's judgment. And God is true in his word. He, he just like he did with um David when David uh transgressed with Bathsheba. And he said, you know what, David, yes, you may now you have a son with Bathsheba, but I gotta take the son of yours because if I don't, then everybody else is gonna look at me like a liar, like I'm showing favoritism towards you. Yeah. You transgressed and you know the consequences of that, and that's just what it's gonna have to be. Mm-hmm. He's the holy God. Yes. And yeah, and he'll give you he'll give you grace many times. Right. And mercy. To endure the judgment. Mm-hmm. But judgment is definitely coming. Because Amen. He's just God. Amen. Amen. The God in his mercy, though, even though we transgress his laws and we make a big mess out of something, he is so good. That he has provided forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, we make restitution or reparation or we repent and we turn Mm -hmm. and then we make uh, amends for Mm -hmm. our sins. God is so good to forgive our sins. And one of the things that I'm seeing in this is the deceptiveness of our own mind. Mm. Because we're in this place where, and I say we because we're no different from what they mm-hmm, were, but mm-hmm. we find ourselves in a place where we we sin, and somewhere in our mind we justified it, mm-hmm. we made it, we made ourselves okay with it, mm-hmm. and this is evident because when they were confronted with their sin, as you were saying, then they began to weep and yeah. they began to cry. Mm-hmm. So there was a realization that came in, and a lot of times um, we beat ourselves up, and then you know sometimes you should beat yourself up mm-hmm. when you find yourself in that willful sin, mm-hmm. and I think it's that realization is that breaking, and and then and then when you realize that God is so good, like you said, He's not willing that any should perish. Yeah, that all. realization comes at that Lord, mm-hmm. could, you could have killed me at mm-hmm. any time right. in my sin, right. but you allowed me to repent and come mm-hmm. back to you. And the Bible says, a broken and a contrite right. heart, right. He, he won't despise. Won't despise. despise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So He blesses you to come back, and um, and it's good then because God is the same. Mm. He doesn't change. Doesn't mm-hmm. change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. forever. And when Jesus said, I and my father are one, we, we're talking about, when we talk about God in the Old Testament, we're talking about the same Jesus in the New, in the New Testament. Amen. He hasn't changed. Amen. And even back then, as he gave, as you just read, even back then, as he gave Israel an opportunity to repent, mm. he constantly gives us opportunity to repent. Right. And so as you spoke about changing God, not changing, we change. Mm-hmm. We change our mind, we change our attitudes, mm-hmm. we change even the God that God that we choose to serve, the idols that we pick up along the way, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And we change the rules. And even in our in our legislations, mm-hmm. we change the rules. If God said that you should not uh commit adultery, or he says that you should not offer your children to the the gods mm-hmm. in, you know in, in uh, on the fire he that's not going to change and, and it hasn't changed mm-hmm. but when the legislature comes and says well you know it's all right abortion is fine right. uh because we've had so many problems and a woman has a right to her, to decide you know her own what her what she does with her body so we say oh the law says that mm-hmm. you know abortions are uh, legal well then you know what that's okay or it's all right for me to uh live in sin because the law awesome. now mm-hmm. says it's okay mm-hmm. but god doesn't change and he's going to hold us responsible for his word mm-hmm. not for uh what the legislatures mm-hmm. uh slaters say mm-hmm. uh well, it's, it's God. It's mm-hmm. God's word. There are often those people who say, well, you know, we have to obey the law of the land. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't understand the law of the land. They don't mm-hmm. understand the Constitution. They don't understand that there's difference between laws, statutes, codes, ordinances, and, and, and all of these different mm-hmm. things. And um, a lot of times we're coerced or we're um, pushed into illegal decisions made by those people who we trust Mm -hmm. to um, make laws for us and to better our lives. And when you don't know, well, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's also, that's biblical knowledge, but it's also, you know, everyday knowledge as well. Mm -hmm. So when we don't know, when we don't understand the law, and when we think that we can't just pick up a book the same way we pick up the Bible and understand the Bible, when we can't pick up a law book and understand the law, 
and we leave the interpretation of everything that we do in our lives to somebody else. <laughs> it, 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 there's a there's a parallel there. The 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 book of the law, our, our law books, you know, <laughs> and then also the book of the law, the Bible. Yes. Right. Right. And it kind of works the same Very way. Very different. Yeah. Laws, you so. have to know. Yes. If you don't know, yes. then you know you people are destroyed. For lack for of lack knowledge. knowledge. We are to be mindful to follow godly leadership. Godly leadership is whenever somebody leads you to God and not to themselves. So that is one of many um, things that you could look at if you are following godly leadership. Are they leading you to the throne room of God or are they leading you to themselves? When we stand before the righteous judge, we're not going to be able to say, Lord, I didn't know. I didn't understand. That's why I didn't do what you told me to do. It would be a good thing now to search the scriptures and find out what God wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. My final thought this week is also an ongoing thought, and it's that, Lord, I want to be right with you. Whatever it is, whatever's going on around me, if it's not right, Lord, show me and then give me the will, fortify me, give me the strength to make the change. I want to be a doer of your word, not just to hear. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be here next week, and we want you to join us for Merkaba Ministries Sunday School Discussions. Bye-bye.